Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. Let's talk boxing. Today is Thursday, November the 1st, 2018. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now just a brief word on a trainer who I think you need to know about and look at hard and consider when his fighters are taking on other guys. In an earlier video, I praised Andre Rosier, right? He had both fighters in the recent Danny Jacobs fight. He trained both Derevianchenko and Danny Jacobs, right? That's an accomplishment. Now, when we talk about boxing, right, divisions, we'll talk about multi-divisional champions, right? It's really something when a guy holds belts in more than one division at the same time, right? Think Henry Armstrong for the boxing historians out there, right? At one point when boxing only had eight weight classes, one guy simultaneously held a belt in three of them. Well, let me just say, I want the world here to focus on trainer Derek James. Right now, understand, this guy is so well known that he was Yahoo Sports' trainer of the year in 2017. Now, I personally don't believe that these trainers get enough publicity. The reason you need to know Derek James's name is because right now he's the trainer for Errol Spence, the champ at 147 pounds. Jamel Charlo, the champ at 154 pounds. And Rob Brandt, the champ at 160 pounds. Right? This one trainer right now is holding several titles. Right? Food for thought. Let me also say this too. You might remember Rob Brandt was in the World Boxing Super Series for the 168 pound weight class and he lost to Jurgen Bramer. Right? A guy who himself was champion at 175 pounds for a while. Right? Well, just understand, Rob Brandt then loses weight, goes back to 160, fights the 2012 Olympic gold medalist and then current world champion Ryota Murata. Now understand, Murata is a puncher. That's how he beat Hassan Endam, certainly the second time, right? An argument can be made, he beats Endam both times. He gets job the first time, destroys him the second time. This is a guy whose MO is punching power. Well, Rob Brandt, and we'll talk about that fight in greater detail another time. This is really a video on Kubrat Pulev's win over Yui Fury. But understand that after the fight, and it's noteworthy, Rob Brandt, who beats a puncher for the title at 160, who fought at 168 against a guy who used to be a light heavyweight champ at 175. Rob Brandt actually gave an interview after the fight where he said that Murata did not hit as hard as his sparring partner, 147 pound champion Errol Spence. <laughs> Folks, that's how hard Spence hits. Now all of that said, I still believe that Errol Spence would lose to Mikey Garcia. Let's see if that fight ever happens. In any event, keep an eye on Derek James, um, let me just say too, Jamel Charlo's interesting. He used to be more of a boxer earlier in his career. This is one of the champs at 154. Now he's sitting down on punches and he's more of a lower volume puncher. Now, right? 
In my opinion, the jury's still out on whether that's going to work long term. Right? In other words, if you're a heavy, heavy puncher, like Errol Spence, okay, sitting down on shots, sacrificing quantity for quality, all right. I understand. 12 rounds against Errol Spence, that's an awfully long time. Now, Jamel Charlo has been stopping guys, but in my opinion, he doesn't hit as hard as Errol Spence, right? So understand, it's kind of like a deal with the devil. You're a boxer, higher volume. You decide, okay, I'm going to frame my punches a little bit better. I'm going to punch harder, but I'm going to punch less, right? That's going to lead to you giving away some rounds, right? Jamel Charlo's had some close calls. We'll see what happens at 154. Let's talk about this Yui Fury fight. Now, this fight's frustrating. Frustrating. First to the gamblers, let me say, the hedge of Kubrat Pulev by decision won. Right? But that's not what I wanted. I wanted Yui Fury to win the fight. Right? Yui Fury was my main course. He wasn't the hedge. Right? You look at the first round of this fight, Fury, he's the bigger fighter. He's the less robotic fighter. Understand, Kubrat Pulev is somewhat limited, right? Great jab, but he has to be standing a certain way to throw it. Not a lot of lateral movement, right? He's not an up on the balls of his feet moving target who's throwing offense at you. He's more of a plodding guy trying to come forward to land the big jab. When he fought Vladimir Klitschko, Vladimir Klitschko introduced him to his straight right hand. Right? Pulev was unprepared for it. Bluntly put, the Pulev I saw in this fight would have no shot of beating Anthony Joshua. Right? Understand, Fury has power, but he doesn't have Joshua level power. Joshua has a jab, and he has a Vladimir Klitschko type of straight right hand. Right? He wouldn't have to worry about Pulev moving around the ring or fainting. He wouldn't have to worry about the kind of athleticism that Joseph Parker was hinting at that kept Joshua's right hand in the holster for most of that fight. Right? No, with Pulev, Pulev would be coming at him and not quickly. Pulev is in his late 30s. Pulev would be coming at him in a stance trying to land a left jab. I think Joshua would be throwing very potent straight right hands. I think Joshua would be throwing left hooks off of his jab. I think Joshua would be going to the body. I think Joshua would be too much for Kubrat Pulev. But let's talk about Yui Fury. We get to the first round of this fight. Now understand, it's a Pulev crowd. It's in Pulev's backyard. You understand, Pulev isn't coming to knock you out. He's coming to outbox you. You understand, his best punch is that left jab. You understand that. You know he's savvy. He's an older fighter. The fact that he's fought. People like Derek Chisora, Vladimir Klitschko. You understand, this is a guy who has been around. This is a survivor. So, if you're in Yui Fury's corner, you have to be aware of the fact that you're starting the fight with a two-round deficit. That some of the judges are going to score close rounds for the hometown fighter. Folks, that's the way boxing works. They even point out on the telecast that Pulev is a national hero in Bulgaria. Right? I believe it's Bulgaria. So when he traveled to fight Vladimir Klitschko, the crowd traveled with him. This is kind of like a poor man's Ricky Hatton. You remember when Ricky Hatton would travel to the United States? 
and then the crowd would travel with Ricky. Then they would sing, there's only one Ricky Hatton. Well, this crowd's kind of like that. They don't have songs and stuff like that, but you could tell. The crowd has his back. He's the man in his country. So when you step off the plane as the opponent and you head to the arena, you've got to say to yourself, okay, look, this is a heavyweight eliminator. I'm not going to have a lot of friends in the crowd. The judges aren't going to be able to hear people screaming for me and then say, you know what, that is right. I'm giving Fury this round. That's not the way it's going to go. Rather, if Pulev comes within the area code of you, some judge is going to hear screaming. And they're going to give the round to Pulev. So you understood. This had to be a statement fight for Fury. So the first round opens, and folks, I got to tell you, this is a heartbreaking fight, at least heartbreaking for me. Not just in the fact that the guy I wanted to win didn't win. Again, the hedge held. You got back some of your money. But it's just the idea that you see these two guys, and Fury's bigger. Fury's the better athlete. When Fury sets his mind to it, his jab's as good as Kubrat Pulev's jab. In the opening part of the first round, it's clear that if Fury knows what he's doing and nothing goes wrong, this is his fight. Right? Fury has lateral movement. He's the guy who's leading while Pulev has to play catch-up. Right? But Yui Fury is an interesting character, right? He's the guy who doesn't control the room. I don't know what's going on with the guy, but, you know, he just doesn't quite connect with what's going on. So he comes out, in my opinion, he wins the first round. I was a happy camper three minutes into this fight, folks. Second round happens, something bad happens. He gets cut, right? And it's legitimate. In other words, it's not a headbutt or something like that. No, he gets hit with a left jab. And a cut that he had before the fight opens up, right? This is boxing, by the way. Understand in boxing, the fighters are never 100% healthy. Right? Guys have aching hands. Guys have nicks and bruises. Some fighters enter the ring with colds or a balky knee. Right? But understand, this is an event-based business. You sign the contract. You have the opportunity. It's a heavyweight elimination fight. You're going to take the fight. So Fury enters the ring with a cut that required a stitch over one of his eyes. And of course, Pulev opens it up, right? All is fear and love and war. Folks, this is war. <laughs> Guy enters the ring with the cut. Yeah, you're damn right. You're going to work on that cut. You're trying to win the fight. That's the point of participating. So, second round comes, right? Fury, you know, has his hair combed off at the side, has a clever-looking beard. You know, he and his crew are in a foreign country. They've won the first round. Second round, he gets cut. Gets cut. Start of the third round, Fury comes out. He's aggressive. He doesn't go into a shell off the cut. He's aggressive. He comes out, has a great start to the third round. Here's the problem. You're Yui Fury. You're Yui Fury. Can't you be aggressive and at the same time use lateral movement? Can't you be aggressive on your back foot? I was expecting the Yui Fury who was going to be sticking and moving, especially, especially with a bad cut over his eye. 
You got a bad cut over your eye. You don't decide, okay, forget my foot movement, which gives me a distinct advantage over this guy in his late 30s who's a robot in the ring. You don't say, you know what, I got a bad cut here on my eye. Let me stand and trade so this guy can land on the eye and break the cut wide open. Rather, don't you get on your toes and start to move? Let me say this too. Fury wants to land a straight right hand. That's obvious, right? He wants to land it. Now you're on the road. You know that if this is a low volume fight, right? You understand if it's a low volume fight where you're stationary in the ring, you lose. Folks, the fight's not in London. The fight's in Bulgaria. You're fighting a popular Bulgarian fighter. Right? Yuri Fury, rather than circle Pulev, right? Rather than match Pulev's jab with his own jab. By the way, Pulev's jab's not landing. That's the talent gap between the two guys. Rather than stick and move and then plan to plant your feet and come with the right hand. Fury abandons the movement. Right, folks, I got to tell you, I mean, some of the guys who've been up on their toes in the past have been devastating punchers. Just think about the Sugars, Sugar Ray Robinson, Sugar Ray Leonard. Right, these are guys who moved and they still were able to drop heavy punches. Here, Yui Fury gets hurt. Then guess what? He decides in Bulgaria to make this a low volume fight. He decides to hang out on the side of the ropes. Right? I, man, I'm shocked. I'm shocked. It's even worse than that. Understand, he's on the side of the ropes. This isn't Ali Foreman. It's not like Pulev is wasting a lot of energy, throwing a lot of punches and stuff like that. This is no rope-a-dope, right? Pulev is savvy. He's not the young man Foreman was when he fought Ali. This is an older guy who's like 37. So Pulev sees him on the side of the ropes, knows that he's trying to load up and land a right hand on him. So Pulev isn't wasting his energy. Pulev's over there. Pulev's throwing a jab. This is a jabber. Pulev's throwing a jab. Pulev's looking at him. Pulev's just cutting off the ring. Right? The pace of the fight is such where Pulev is not going to be tired like Foreman was when Ali comes off the ropes and knocks him out. Right? No. Pulev is just grateful that he's fighting a guy with great footwork who has decided because of a cut that he's going to try to end the fight in the third round in the fourth round, in the fifth round, and understand, Fury's not winning these rounds. Right? So I think Fury panicked. You know, he had a cut, got a stitch, cut opens back up in the fight. No doubt, before the fight, he and his corner were thinking, gee, what do we do if the cut opens up? It's clear that Fury felt he could land a straight right hand on Pulev, right? But folks, there has to be more to boxing than that, right? Imagine fighting Ray Leonard, and all Ray is doing is just trying to load up with one punch, right? By the way, that's the Ray Leonard-Terry Norris fight late in Ray's career, right? Of course, like Fury, that didn't work out well for Ray. Right? So this is an interesting fight where Fury loses the room. He gets cut. The first round goes out the window. He's too flat-footed. Then he just tries to outslug the older fighter. Think about it. You're fighting an older fighter. You know, many guys would say, hey, let me, let me push this pace. Let me wilt this older guy. Let me let him understand, hey, I'm the one with the younger lungs here. 
<laughs> I'm the better athlete here. You're not going to be able to keep up. That wasn't this fight. This was the fight where the younger guy decides, I'm going to slow down this fight. I think I can catch this older guy by having him jump into a right hand while I'm over here in the corner. Bad strategy. You know, I'll say this, and I don't say it lightly. Yui Fury's better than this. He, he lost the fight. I'm not saying he was robbed. He lost the fight. But wow, his strategy was curious. You know, that cut in the second round, <laughs> that cut in the second round just threw whatever game plan he had out the window. Maybe he thought he was going to stun us with this game plan. Right, but it was ridiculous. What's, you know, understand Ali's the old man when he fights Foreman. Right, Foreman's the young lion. So Ali had to say, how am I going to pace myself? This is Ali in 74. Right, a guy who became champ in something like 65 before getting stripped. Right? The young guy's not supposed to get cut and then decide, oh, I'm going to go flat-footed. Did Yui Fury not realize that he has the best legs in the heavyweight division? By the way, a viewer here did correct me. A viewer said, you know what, I think Usyk has the best legs at heavyweight. All right, you know, I could buy that, but why don't we wait until Usyk actually has a fight at heavyweight? Okay, I don't want to crowd someone as having the best legs in a division that the guy hasn't been in. Right? You know, I feel hesitant saying Canelo has the best of anything at 168 before the guy actually fights at 168. Just food for thought. Anyway, I was a little bit surprised and disappointed with Fury here. Let me know what you think. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.